agenda down, you know, setting things up so we can have these Bible studies like that. It is very much appreciated because I can honestly tell you, I don't know what I would do without my weekly Bible studies. I cannot tell you how much these Bible studies saved other people. Saved me too, but other people as well. So I just thank God for all of you being here on the day. So we're going to bow our heads for a word of prayer before we start it. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, Lord, not asking you for anything, Lord, but just giving you praise, glory, and honor for all the things that you have given us, that you have done for us and for our families. Lord, would you ask that you continually um, touch the ones that are in bereavement, Lord, the ones that are in the hospitals, in the jail cells, Lord, in hospice care, the convalescent homes, the rehab centers, Lord. We just ask, Lord, that you keep a special covering over them, Lord. And Lord, also we ask that you give a special double portion of safety over our children, Lord. We know how the world is, and we know that our young people are being sucked into immoral things, Lord, and we just ask that you keep them covered, keep their minds right, so they can resist the enemy, because the enemy comes in many forms, beautiful forms, that draw our children in, Lord, and we just ask that you just give them the wisdom and the eyesight and the hearing so they can know what is right and what is wrong. Lord, on today, Lord, we just want to thank you for our pastor and first lady on tonight, Lord, as well as our other clergy that we have on. You know, we have other Russian and sister Russian on, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you just watch over all of our clergy in the pulpit. And also for our teacher, Elder Terrell, Lord, yeah. just ask that you just bless him and his wife, but also bless him as he teaches this lesson and you put the words in the mouth that you will have him to go so that we can be much better in our daily journey to get toward you. And Lord, once again, we just want to thank you for everything you've done in our lives, Lord. And we just ask that you just keep all of us covered, all of Faith Temple color, as well as all the other churches, Lord, in general, Lord. Mm -hmm. Cover us and keep us strong, Lord, mm -hmm. that we make sure other people are like, that we may show them your good works and that they may come running to you asking, what must I do to be saved? And Lord, we ask all of these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, ladies and men. So we have a lovely lesson, The Benefits of Laughter in the Bible. So we do have our background reading as being Psalms uh, 126 chapter in the second verse, Proverbs, the 14th chapter, the 13th verse. We have Luke. 6th chapter, the 25th verse, and we have James, which is the 4th chapter, and the ninth verse. Our devotional readings are Genesis 18th chapter, the 9th to the 13th verse, and also Genesis, the 6th chapter, and the 6th verse. Our central verse is Proverbs, the 17th chapter, and the 22nd verse. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to to do so. Raise your hands. This is what the Bible study is for. We do appreciate our teacher, Elder Terrell, for teaching this lesson. But some things that you may be saying or going through will help us as well. So don't feel shy about um, asking any questions. So ladies and gentlemen, I now give you into the hands of our teacher for tonight, Elder Terrell Batson. May we all please say amen as he comes. Amen. Amen, Elder amen. Terrell. God bless you. Amen. God bless you all. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, so tonight's lesson four, our lesson is the benefits of laughter. Amen. In the Bible, the benefits of laughter in the Bible. Um, went over our background readings, our devotional and our central verse. 
which is in the book of Proverbs. So, um, yeah, we're going to talk about laughter. We're going to talk about what laughter is, what laughter means. I might tell a couple jokes. You never know. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, so, um, let's get into our introduction and then we'll go into our lesson for tonight. Uh, can I have somebody read our introduction? Sister Marsha? Yes. Hello, dear Elder Batson. Thank you. Yeah. The introduction. It is said by many people that sometimes we have to laugh to keep from crying. What are people saying? How can they come to such a conclusion? Is there any merit in this saying? Well, I do not know, but we will try to find out as we explore this lesson about laughter. Laughter is said in Wikipedia to be a pleasant physical reaction, an emotion consisting usually of rhythmical or audible contraction of the diaphragm and other parts of the respiratory system. It is a response to certain external and internal stimuli. Laughter can arise from such activities as being tickled or from hum humorous stories or thoughts. Human lives are filled with tragedies, problems, challenges, and many uncertainties which fill a person with sorrow. So it is needed, needful to have laughter to help the spirit of a person. The word of the Lord tells the believer to exchange the spirit of heaviness for a garment of praise. Get rid of the, how you say that? Me, melancholy? Melancholy. Melancholy spirit by letting a little laughter into your life, for laughter is like medicine. Amen. Thank you, Sister Marshall. You're welcome. All right. So, um, how many of you like laughing? You like laughing? Amen. Yeah. Man, Sister Russian already laughed. I know she like laughing. <laughs> Amen. Laughter is good. Amen. Laughter is is, is special. Amen. Um, we're not too holy that we can't laugh. We're not too saved that we can't laugh and enjoy ourselves. Amen. Well, let's enjoy ourselves on tonight. Uh, so let's look at, at laughter. Amen. And let's look at the purpose of laughter and what laughter is. Amen. Um, and laughter, uh, when we define uh, laughter and to laugh, it means to express mirth. Amen. And mirth means uh, joy, cheerful, cheerfulness. So it's you, your laughter is the expression of uh, joy. It's uh, the expression of pleasure. It's the expression of derision, uh, which means um, mockery. Amen. Uh, my dad, uh, our pastor, he usually <laughs> he tells my uh, my kids, nan, 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 and he laughs at them. Amen. So it's like mockery. <laughs> Amen. Um, and it's also an expression of nervousness. Sometimes you laugh when you're nervous. All right. But it's an audible expression um, with vo vocal expulsion. So it's heard. Amen. Uh, from the air in our lungs. Okay. So laughter comes from within and expressed outwardly um, with certain emotions. Uh, the Hebrew word for uh, to laugh is sokat, which means to play or to mock. Amen. And the Greek word is jalayo, which means to laugh or to smile. Amen. So uh, when we look at laughter, uh, laughter is used to express happiness, joy, accomplishment, victory, and praise, all right? Uh, laughter is a byproduct of emotion, okay? Uh, like we said, when you have joy, you laugh, amen? Uh, happiness, all right? The expression, laughter when you're happy. And that can be brought out uh, physically, like the introduction said, you'd be tickled, somebody can physically tickle you. Uh, it could be verbally, somebody could tell you a joke, um, and it can be visibly, you can see something funny, you're watching a show, watching a movie, um, or it can be mentally, you could just be thinking about things, amen? I laugh a lot mentally, I just think of random things. I'll be cracking up in my head, <laughs> amen? So, uh, 
we laugh um, when we are physically touched because of pleasure. Amen. Like I said, uh, when somebody's tickling you, amen, uh, although you may want it to stop, amen, the nerve endings in your skin send signals to your brain of pleasure. So this is why you laugh. Uh, that pleasure makes you laugh because laughter is the expression of pleasure. All right. Uh, the reason why you may want the tickling to stop, though, is because of overstimulation by those nerves. All right. Although it's pleasurable, it becomes too much to deal with. So that's what you laugh and you're like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> Amen. It's too much now. All right. Uh, usually uh, adults don't tickle adults, so that's more for children. But <laughs> if that's your thing, that's your thing. Amen. All right. Um, so this is what laughter is. It expresses joy, it expresses happiness. All right. Uh, I got a question. Who was the smartest man in the Bible? Jesus. No. Nope. It was a. Nope. No. Nope. It was Abraham. Abraham. <laughs> Ask me why. Why? Because he knew a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> I told you I was trying to make you laugh, baby. <laughs> All right. So laughter, amen. Laughter releases endorphins, all right, uh, which is a group of hormones from the brain and the nervous system. And that activates the body's opiate receptors. And opiate comes from the word opium, which is like a drug, amen, uh, that we have in our body. Uh, and it causes uh, analgesic effect. And what that means is it's a drug-like effect that relieves pain. Amen. So laughter literally is medicine to the body because of these hormones that are released when you laugh, when you have joy. And this is from the scientific perspective. All right. That's the scientific perspective. But when we look at it from the spiritual perspective, um, our central verse, Proverbs 17, 22. And it says a merry heart do with good like a medicine. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. Amen. So a merry heart. Does that word merry mean? All right. Not my wife. Merry heart. Happy. Amen. Uh, uh, joyous. Amen. It doeth good like a medicine. All right. So even spiritually is backing up what uh, we find out scientifically. All right. Um, I got another thing. Ask you another question. You guys ready? Yes. All right. How did the man in the mirror respond to the joke? What? Right. <laughs> he reflected on it. Oh, that's a good one. He reflected on it. Amen. Am <laughs> I looking at himself? Is it it? It's close. I'll say it again. How did the man in the mirror respond to the joke? Joke this to respond mirror the man that did how? He laughed. Okay, <laughs> now. I just reversed it. Because when you're uh -huh. looking in the mirror, it's the reverse. Amen? So I just reversed <laughs> the, the joke. Amen? Sydney got it. <laughs> Amen. All right. Uh, Let's look at uh, going back to Proverbs. Amen. I told you I'm a dabbler man and every now and then. I'm trying to get you to laugh. Amen. Is that okay? Okay. All right. So, um, King Solomon, he wrote Proverbs. And he said, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. All right. King Solomon was not a doctor. All right. He was a wise king with a concubine problem. He was a wise king. Amen. But here in this verse, he gives us a spiritual prescription to any of our natural problems. And your attitude and perspective affects your outlook on life and health. Amen? Your attitude and your perspective, it affects your outlook on your life and your health. If I have joy in my heart, no matter the outcome, that joy is my medicine because it's from who? Who's our joy from? It's from the Lord. 
from the Lord. Amen. It's from the Lord. Our joy is from the Lord, which is our strength. Okay. Um, uh, be a bit transparent. I just had a procedure done. All right. This past Friday. And they went in and they had to check some things in my coat. Amen. And as I lay in the hospital on the bed, I began to smile. Amen. And I just began to sing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I just began to smile. Amen. And the Lord let me know that everything is going to be all right. All right. So there was comfort. The Lord gave me comfort. All right. Um, and in that time and in that period, all right, my brother, <laughs> my brother Dante, he texts me. All right. And he texts me for about two days straight. And he just kept joking. He was texting me all of these jokes, amen, making light of the situation, but unbeknownst to him, I needed that, amen? Now, in, in his mind, he's just being him. He's just being Dante, all right? But it was medicine for me because after all was said and done, all right, after they were finished, the biopsy came back and everything was negative. God had worked everything out. Everything was all right. Okay, but going through the process, I was able to have laughter. All right. So he gave me something that he didn't know that he gave. Me. Amen. And I text him at the procedure and we shared another laugh. All right. Um, and again, he doesn't know it, but he's texting me as a big brother, just messing with his little brother. But I know that's his way of showing love. All right. Through laughter. And that's what that did. All right. It calmed the situation. All right. So laughter. All right. It affects us in a way and it keeps us. All right. It keeps us grounded. Amen. So going back to the verse, Solomon understood that joy is a spiritual medicine that heals all wounds, spiritual and physical. Amen. You all believe that? Spiritual, I know. Some may People may be skeptical on the physical. You mean to tell me that laughter and joy can heal the physical? Amen. Yes, and my response is yes. Amen. It's yes. Because some of our ailments are from mental stress. Amen. So if I can tap into the joy of the Lord and change my mind and my heart and my perspective, then you can alleviate the stress, which can alleviate the ailment. A lot of things that we go through in our body is because of mental stress. Stress has an effect on your body. Amen. It make you sick. It'll mess with your heart. It'll mess with your mind. All right. But our source of that strength, our source of that joy, all right, is found in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. It's found in our relationship with Jesus Christ. In our discussion, um, in the third paragraph of our discussion, it says, Psychology Today is quoted to say that laughter has several health benefits. Bouts of laughter can boost the immune system, relax muscles, circulation, and protect against heart disease. Excuse me. It can lower anxiety, that's stress, release tension, improve mood, and foster resilience. All right? You ever be down and out? Somebody come, and they give you that laugh, and you say, you know what? You just made my day. Hey, Amen? That's what laughter does. That's what it does. And this is what God wants for his children. He wants to see us. Hey, Amen? Uh, in that expression of joy. All right? Not saying you can't cry, because you're going to cry. Oh, yeah, you're going to cry. Amen? But you also got to laugh. All right? Got to laugh. So, uh, look at Proverbs. Fill in the book of Proverbs, that 10th chapter, and the 28th verse. And it says, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness but the expectation of the wicked shall perish so who is our hope 
Is our hope. Jesus is our hope. Jesus. Jesus is. Amen. So the gladness that we're looking for is in him. When we have him, all right? When we have him, that's our gladness. This is where we draw our joy from. Amen. This is what enable, enables us to laugh. Amen. In situations where some people might say, oh, God. Amen. I don't know how I'm going to get out. But on the contrast, on the contrast of a joyous heart, a hopeless heart. Amen. It's a hopeless heart. And Solomon says a broken spirit dries the bones. You know what that means? You know, you know what it means when your bones dry? They brittle. Brittle. Amen. What does that mean for your life? If your bones dry, you dead. You, you dead. dead. <laughs> Amen. Your bones is, is, is back in the dust. They dried out. Remember the valley of dry bones? It was all dead. Amen. So this is an individual with a dead spirit. It means you're dead inside. Hopelessness causes death inside. Uh, did you know that severe depression leads to heart failure, hypertension, ulcers, heart disease? Amen. Something mental affects the body. This is why laughter, which is a byproduct of joy, is medicine for our entire being, for our spirit, for our soul, for our body. It's medicine. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, did you guys know that the Bible tells us men are supposed to make coffee? Anybody know okay. that? Okay. Yes. I think yes. we got that one. I got I got yes. that one. What what book is it in? Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrews. <laughs> All right. I got some of y'all. All right. <laughs> so, two things I want to ask. No, these are jokes, all right? Uh, one, is laughter a gift from God? Yes. Yes, no. Sister Marcia said yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, First Lady. Mm hmm. I don't know. Oh, I agree. No. I agree. Mother Pinks agrees. Yes. I, don't know. I think it is. Brother James said he think it is. All right. All right. Let me preface that question with another question. This is what Jesus would always do. He would answer a question with a question. All right. Is laughter good? Mm -hmm. Yes, it yes. is. Yes. 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 It's good, right? Yes. Generally speaking, laughter is good. All right. Generally speaking, laughter is good. And we just substantiated it as medicine for our entire being. So laughter is good. Scripture then tells us in James 1.17 that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So if it's a good thing, it's from God. Amen. It's a gift from God. All right? It's a good gift from God. So, yes, it's a gift from God because it's a byproduct of joy. And where do we get joy from? The Lord. 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 Joy comes from Him. So, yes, it's an expression of that joy. So, yes, laughter is a gift of God. My second question is Does God have a sense of humor? Oh, yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> no hesitation. I thought I was going to get some. Some, <laughs> some I don't know. Y'all just went straight in. All right. Uh, absolutely. Anybody want to elaborate why they think God has a sense of humor quickly? I say, from, from what I say, I always say, when I'm talking to God, I always say, you know, Lord, you have jokes. Like, God, you have a lot of jokes. Because it's like, when you think you're doing something, and then when God shows you, 
Like, you ain't doing a thing. I got this. And it, I'd be like, oh, step back. God, you got some jokes. But I laugh at it because I know he got me. So it's like when I start being like, yeah, and I get the worrying and thinking about things, and all of a sudden God would just drop something in my spirit. And I'd be like, mm hmm, you ain't got nothing. God has it all. And then that's when I just said, thank you, Lord. You got jokes, and that's good because you letting me know I ain't in control of nothing. That's just my take. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister T. Uh, and, and that's that's exactly how God be working things. Amen. Uh, Mother Lynn said, because we we have a sense of humor and we're made in his image. Amen. And his likeness. Amen. Where do we get it from? <laughs> we get it from him. We were made in his image and likeness. All right. So I don't think God is in heaven doing stand-up comedy. That's not what I'm saying, on his throne, all right? <laughs> but I do believe God has the quality of humor, amen, just like Mother Lynn said, because we have that quality, all right? Uh, and God, uh, the quality of humor means to be amused by things, all right? And when we look at Psalm 37, verses 12 and 13, and 12 says, the wicked plotted against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. 13 says, the Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Amen. Lord, cracking up. <laughs> All right. The Lord is laughing at the wicked. All right. Who think that they're going to be able to plot against the just. Amen. So verse 13 lets us know that God is amused by the wicked in their attempt to plot against his people. All right. God's like, oh, that's cute. Y'all think y'all going to get away with it. Amen. <laughs> y'all think y'all just going to have your way. All right. But remember, the Hebrew word for laugh is sakak, which also means to mock. All right. So in this particular verse, God is mocking the wicked because of their insolence. All right. Like, do you know who I am? I'm the living God. The only reason you woke up this morning is because I allowed it. And here you are plotting like I don't know what's going on. You plotting in your mind like I don't know your thoughts. Amen. It's laughable. It's funny. All right. So he laughs. <laughs> Has to say, do what you're going to do, man. Try it out. <laughs> Let's see how far you get. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let, let you attempt. All right. And then I'm going to show you. All right. That I am God. All right. So, yes, God has a sense of humor because we are made in his image and his likeness. And we have that same sense of humor. And laughter is a good thing. And God is a good God. Amen. All right. All right. So. God ever do something. And Sister T already alluded to this. Um, when God does something for you and you didn't know how he was going to do it. But once he put that thing together, all you could do as a result is just laugh. Amen. Because you was trying to figure things out. And it was like, well, I, Lord, if I do it this way and he was just like, can you just chill out? Let me do me. Amen. That's why he said, be still and know that I am God. All right. We always try to figure these things out. And then when we can't figure it out and God does what God does, we look back. And this is why they say hindsight is twenty twenty, because you look back and then you look at yourself and was like, and I'm sitting here trying to figure this thing out. And God had already figured it out. And it's funny to me. Amen. And it's not it's funny because it's like <laughs> I should have just let God do what he was going to do in the first place. And I wouldn't have to deal with all of that worry. Amen. Amen. But it's because of the joy also that you have from coming out of the situation. Amen. remember, laughter is a byproduct of victory as well. So when you come out of a situation and you are victorious, you got to get that victory laugh. Amen. The devil thought he had me. Amen. But I got out. All right. 
I know we've been in those situations. You ever been in a situation where you went into the situation with tears, but you came out with laughter and you came out with tears of joy? Amen. God has a sense of humor. He'll work it out. Trust him. Amen. Won't he trust him? All right. Um, can I tell you what's, what, what goes on in, in my imagination? Can I give y'all something? All right, so in my Holy Ghost imagination, sometimes I picture what Jesus would do with his disciples. Amen. You imagine him sitting at the table. They eating their bread. You know, they bring in a lamb or, 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 or a, 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 a bull. You know, we're going to have some meat tonight. All right. And can you just picture them all at the table? Jesus, you know, all his apostles just going around. And then one of them comes to serve. And they say, we're going to eat. We're going to eat tonight. Amen. And we're going to have some, some roast bull tonight. Amen. So then the servant goes to James. He said, James, you know, what do you want? James said, I'll just take some bread. You know, you don't want no meat, James? No, nah, I'm good. I'll pass. And then he goes to Peter. He said, Peter, what do you want? Peter said, I want the bull. How would you like your meat, Peter? And Peter said, I want it burnt. Hey, Amen. You know, Peter aggressive. I want it burnt. I want it black. I, I want it Hebrew boy hot. Hey, Amen. <laughs> and then the servant says, okay. And then the servant goes to Jesus. And he says, Jesus, how would you like your meat? And Jesus looks at him and says, well done, good and faithful servant. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. I just want to get y'all involved. All right. If you didn't laugh, my apologies. <laughs> That's my Holy Ghost imagination. Let's move forward. All right. So we talked about laughter. We talked about what laughter does for us talked about um where it comes from all right but now let's get serious for a minute let's get serious for this part of the uh of the lesson because laughter like we said it's a good thing but there is laughter that will not last and there is laughter that comes from a place of negativity amen uh now we see how laughter affects the believer amen it affects the believer and laughter is good. Therefore, it's a gift of God. It heals the mind, the body, the soul, our entire being. But not all laughter is good laughter. When it's not based off of God's joy or when it's not something that brings us good pleasure or when it's derived from evil. Amen. You know, the devil always has a mockery. Of every good gift from God. Amen. So there is laughter. That is derived from evil. Um, it's not funny. To laugh at someone who's been hurt. Amen. It's not funny to laugh. At the expense of others. It's not funny to laugh. At people who have been harmed. Or taken advantage of. Amen. And I say that because. In this generation. Amen. With all of these social media things and Twitters and Instagrams and all of these things, uh, they post all kinds of videos of people fighting, people get killed, people get hurt. Amen. And when you look at the comments, all right, people were just laughing, heartless. Amen. They're making jokes about situations that aren't funny. All right. And that's not the type of laughter that is biblical. All right. Proverbs 14. And this is one of our background readings. Um, it's 14 and 13, but starting at verse 12. It says, there is a way which seemeth right unto men. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness. Remember, mirth is cheerfulness and, and pleasure. 
All right. So meaning uh, you cannot cover your pain with demonic joy. Amen. And what I mean by demonic joy, uh, it's a false sense of true joy and it's a derivative of evil. Amen. Like laughing at somebody, you know, getting beat up. Amen. Seeing people in pain brings you pleasure. That's demonic. That's evil. Amen. That's heartless. Seeing people hurt makes you happy. Amen. That's not spiritual laughter. That's not laughter that God is talking about. All right. There's no benefit in that. Now, in the mind of that particular individual, it's right. Hey, they deserve it. That's why scripture says there is a way that seemeth right unto man. The man, it seems right. But that particular mindset leads them to death. Amen? It's not funny to me. All right? But that unrighteousness is not joy. All right? And it leads to death. This is why Solomon then goes on to say, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. All right. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. Remember last quarter, we spoke about how God was angry with the wicked. All right. Mm -hmm. And I said that sometimes we question why bad things don't happen to wicked people. But in actuality, they have to live with themselves inside their wicked mind. All right. Where that's the toughest battle for them that we don't see because we don't know that. All right. We don't see that side of it. We don't know what they have to deal with when they go home and they lay down in that bed at night and have to deal with the psychology of the things that they've done that are wicked. Amen. That's their bad that we don't see. Well, in that same vein, there are individuals who appear to have joy. They laugh at you for being a Christian. Oh, you believe in a visible genie in his God. Somebody said that one time. I was like, oh, really? All right, bro. That's, that's your take on it. God's not a genie. I don't. I don't. I don't get three wishes from God. All right. I don't make wishes. All right. It's not. I can ask for anything, and poof, here it is. It don't work like that. All right. But they'll laugh at you for your beliefs. They'll laugh at you because you're a Christian. They'll laugh at you because you pray. They'll laugh at you because you fast. They'll laugh at you because you have joy. Amen. And that ain't nothing but the devil. The devil don't want to see you happy. He don't want to see you laugh. So he'll send people to laugh at you. All right. That's what I mean by demonic joy. All right. Brings them joy to see you upset. See you angry. Amen. And it's because in their hearts, they're insecure. They're scared. They're lonely. All right. That false laughter is to mask the true pain of hopelessness. They don't have what you have. And they see that you live life vivaciously. Why, why Sister T always so friendly? Why is she always so happy? Why is she always smiling when I come in the store? Why is she always giving words of encouragement? Man, that, that, that annoys me. Why it annoy you that I'm happy? Hey, man. Why are you annoyed that I'm happy? <laughs> you should be trying to get there. You should be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. not only to those who laugh at the behest of others' pain, mm -hmm. all right? But to those whose laughter doesn't last. Without Christ, there is no joy. Amen? Without Christ... Mm -hmm. There is no joy. What we feel as human beings on this earth is happiness, which is earthly joy. But the saying is that happiness is fleeting. You can be happy. Five minutes later, you'd be hot as fish grease. Amen. You'd be annoyed. All right. Because happiness isn't a human emotion. All right. Joy is different. Joy is spiritual. All right. It comes and it goes. Happiness. They laugh without substance. Amen. Why? Because earthly possessions 
and earthly pursuits aren't fulfilling. It's not fulfilling enough to bring them internal and eternal joy that can only be attained through the giver of joy, which is the Lord. Amen. Luke 6 and 25. Again, this is one of our background readings. And it says, Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. So, um, so look at the, the whole spectrum. Because we have to understand context to understand what is what Luke's talking about in this particular verse. All right, what is Luke talking about? Um, and if you read the sixth chapter of Luke, um, this is where the Beatitudes of Jesus are. Okay, and the Beatitudes is where he gives blessings, and then he gives them warnings. Amen. Uh, in verses twenty to twenty-three, he gives the blessing. All right. Uh, verse 20, he says, and he lifted up his eyes to the disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. So he's given the blessing. And then he turns around and gives the curses. Verses 24, 25. It says, But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. So what is Jesus saying? Full is in reference to abundance. Amen. Or rich. So this is a warning to those who are rich. Okay. Who are also oppressors of the poor. Their joy was in their riches. Their joy was in their possessions. And their joy was in their abundance. But remember the rich young ruler? He came to Jesus. And he wanted to know how he was going to get into heaven. And what did Jesus tell him to do? What did Jesus tell him to, he had to do? He had to give up all of his riches. Everything. Not some of it. Not a quarter. Not a third. Not a half. Everything. Amen. Everything. Jesus. He had an analogy on abundance, the rich. He said it is easier for a camel to fit into the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man. Amen. To enter in that. All right. Your laughter is at the expense of the poor. But remember, Jesus said, blessed are the poor, so the reward will come later. Amen. But for those who live in their earthly rewards, your laughter is going to cease later. So you can have it now, but you're not taking it with you. And those who don't have it now, they're going to gain it in the end. Amen. Did you know that we, as human beings, we possess nothing. Did you know that? You don't possess a thing. Because you ain't made nothing. Well, I had three children. You didn't make them. All right. You went through the action of doing so, but you didn't make them. Amen. That's God. We don't possess a thing. Anything we claim to have possession over becomes our God. Why? Because man lost his ability to possess in the garden when man lost his connection with God. The only thing we were created to possess was God. God was supposed to be our only possession. We had dominion over the land. All right. We had all that. But our possession. Him. Therefore, anything that replaces that ability to possess then becomes our God. So it's not until we reconnect back to God that we have possession of God, which then allows us to rule or have dominion or have authority 
over the things that try to possess us, which are the riches of the world, material things. Because in actuality, you never possessed the thing you had in possession. It had possession over you. Why do you think people kill for money? Why do you think the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil? I'm not just talking about monetary things. I'm talking anything in abundance that you seek more than God. Which brings me back to the point as to why having an abundance did not sit well with God. Because it was not from God. And ultimately, it became our God and controlled our livelihood. Amen. That's why James, fourth chapter, verses 7 through 10, he tells us to submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Verse 9 says, be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into heaviness. Now, wait a minute, James, because we just got through talking about how laughter was good. And now you're telling us that we got to stop laughing and mourn. Amen. But again, it's context. Who is he talking to? All right. This verse is not saying to stop laughing and be sad, but this is a call to repentance from worldly ambition. He's telling the sinner or the unrepentant believer to seek God. Now is the time to laugh or now is not the time to laugh. Excuse me. All right. When you're unrepentant, when you don't know God. It ain't no time to be laughing. Amen. You need to be crying out. You need to be hollering for him. Amen. Because you lack the joy of the Lord. So what are you laughing about? All right. Hell is hot and it's not funny. So what are you laughing about? And your response to sin should be mourning. It should be crying out to God in repentance. That's your response to sin. Then can you appreciate the true joy that comes from the Lord? Then you will be able to laugh. All right. He even instructs us in, in James one and two. He said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. There's a difference between falling into temptation as a repentant believer and running into temptation as an unrepentant believer. You see, if I fall into temptation, I can laugh. Amen. I can have the joy of the Lord because I know that God will bring me out. Amen. Through the trials, through the tribulations. Because I have God. But as long as you are unsaved, unrepentant, you are disconnected. You don't want to be laughing then. You, you want to be crying out. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, so those, I just want us to get serious for a minute and, and, and look at the other side of the laugh. Okay. So now let's go back into the good side of laughing. You guys don't mind. All right. We good. Everybody good. Yes? Yes. All right. Yes. I want to hear you. As I want to hear you. Amen. Uncle Jackson, <laughs> yes, as you were speaking, I was thinking of um, um, one of uh, Walt Hawkins' songs. Um, I can't think of the, the name of it, but I was thinking of how it, it says we make a mess of our life. We was created for God's purpose and I went and I found Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This verse clearly teaches that you are not an accident. God created you on purpose for a purpose, which is his purpose. Amen. <laughs> Amen. On purpose, for purpose, which is his purpose. That's three purposes, amen. <laughs> What's well, this? Since you talking, can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, what excuse did Adam give to his children as to why they no longer lived in Eden? Oh. Sex. 
say that again? I said, I what excuse? Me down. No problem. I said, what excuse did Adam give to his children as to why they no they no longer lived in Eden? What did he tell his kid? Help me with that one. I'm gonna help you. He said, your mother ate us out of house and home. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that, that was bad. You know what? <laughs> All right. I told you I'm trying to make you laugh. <laughs> That's right. I need your Holy Spirit right now. That's it. Listen to Amen. that. Because we really can make a mess out of our life thinking that we are in control. We were not created for our own purpose. And I think when we get to that point to understand that, that's it. Purpose, Man. purpose, purpose. And it's all God's. <laughs> you got me, Elder. You got me. <laughs> amen, amen. That's what the message with you. All right. So, um, laughter. All right. The laughter of the believers. Let's talk about the laughter that we have. All right. Luke 6 and 21 says, Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. All right. So what does this tell us? All right. This scripture tells us that there will be laughter in heaven. Amen. How many of y'all believe we're going to we'll be able to laugh in heaven? There's going to be laughter in heaven. You know, it's going to be laughter in heaven because it's going to be joy. Amen. And what is laughter? It's just a byproduct of joy. Amen. The Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. Something about these Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are references to the blessings that will occur in two separate lifetimes. This life and the next. So those who hunger now, all right, those are the ones without Christ. This life. But he's telling them that they shall be filled, which is the foretelling of the Holy Spirit in this life. All right. He's telling them they'll, they shall be filled. Right? So that's the foretelling of his spirit that he's bringing. They'll be able to connect with Christ. All right. In this life. But it also means that while we are on this earth, we have this insatiable appetite for God. That will never be filled. But in the next life, we will be able to receive his fullness. The fullness of his glory. Amen. You ever go to church and church in and you don't want to get out the spirit? Man, I wish I could be here all day. I wish I could be here all week. But you got to go to work. <laughs> you got earthly duties. Amen. But when we get to heaven, ain't no earthly duties. Your duty is to praise God. Your duty is to worship God. Amen. In the same manner. All right. In the same manner, they wept before they knew Christ. But when he came, they received his joy in this life. But also in this life, we will still weep. Like I said, we're going to cry. We're going to weep. Jesus wept. But in the next life, there will be no more weeping. Amen. There'll be no more sorrow. Amen. I can laugh for eternity. Amen. Not all day and night. Because if there's eternity, there's no day and night. I mean, because there's no time. There's no limit. So I can laugh for eternity. Amen. Never ending. So the reason I can laugh now is because of the hope that one day I'll be able to laugh forever. So I might as well start practicing while I'm here. Amen. Amen. Psalm 126. This is another one of our background readings, Psalm 126. And it's, it's, it starts at 2, but I want to look at 1, 1 through 6. And um, Sister Marsh, are you still there? Yes, I am. Do you mind reading Psalms 126, verses 1 through 6? Yes. It says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. 
Then said they among the heathens, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. He said to six? Yes, verse six. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall double, double, doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. Thank you, Sister Mercy. You're welcome. So this is a psalm of David. And in verse 1, uh, it says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. So David said it was like a dream. They were astonished at the works of God. They couldn't believe what God had done. All right. Now, in David's situation, because David wasn't around in the Babylonian captivity. This is, this is uh, pre-Babylonian uh, captivity. But David had a situation where he was briefly exiled from Jerusalem in a coup by his son Absalom. Amen. When Absalom had taken over. Amen. And this also alludes to the future Jerusalem who had been captive in Babylon that God delivered them out as well. All right. So when God delivers you, when God brings you out of a situation. Sometimes it's astonishing because you didn't see the way and you're not always going to see the way. But we should always know that he'll make a way. Amen. I may not see it. but I know he's going to make it. Don't know when, don't know how. All right. And when he does, it's astonishing because the way that God does things. All right. And it gives us this joy. And David goes into it further in verse two. Amen. It says, then our mouths were filled with laughter. Amen. So their response to the joy of the Lord was laughter. Why? Because it's the benefit of God's joy. All right. I can't laugh if I'm hoping. All right. And he describes the laughter, the laughter. He says our mouths were filled. Well, it don't mean that they chuckled when it came out. <laughs> he did it again, man. No, it wasn't one of those. Amen. Their mouths were filled. Ha <laughs> ha! I don't know how they laughed back <laughs> back then. That's my old biblical laugh. I don't know how they laughed, amen. But the Bible says that they were filled with laughter. All right? Meaning that they were overjoyed. All right? They were overjoyed. They were elated at what God had done. Amen. And what he had brought them out of. And then when we go through verses four and five, we said, turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. And the streams of the south were known to be a uh, dry. And uh, they would pray that uh, the rain would come so that the stream uh, could get water. All right. And then he says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Amen. And it's saying that after all the weeping, after all the heartache, after all the heaviness, after all the toiling, after getting dirty, amen, after all the blood, sweat, and tears, after the war within myself, after the battle with the enemies, after the depression had settled, after the smoke had cleared, after the darkness had ceased, I sowed my tears. But now it's time to reap my joy. Saint David, the one that said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. I can laugh because I know I'm victorious now. Oh, I have to go through it. Remember, I told you we're going to weep. I had to weep. Thank you, Lord. But when you look at uh, uh, David, uh, he, he compares it to. Farming, reaping and sowing, that's farming, that's harvesting. And when you look at what they did in those times, and we still do it sometimes in this day, but one thing is they plant seeds, all right? And there's something called seed steeping. And what it is is you take a seed and you soak it in water. You soak it for however many hours, even days, and you soak it in water before you plant it. Now, if you soak the seed before planting it, it causes the seed to swell up, all right? And what this does is it accelerates the germination process of the seed, which is the seed coming out of the, the, the actual <laughs> shell. And then it accelerates the rate in which the seed grows, and it accelerates the size 
of the plant. Amen. So all of your tears you shed. Hallelujah. Is God allowing you to steep in your situation? Where every time you wept, you were steeping. Thank you, Lord. Unbeknownst to you, God was accelerating you at a rate that you didn't know you were prepared for. And that's when you bloomed. And when you bloomed, you were bigger than you thought you ever would be because of the tears. But if you had not sown those tears, you would have never reaped the benefit of the joy. This is why we can laugh. Hallelujah. Coming out of our situation. Because you didn't think you would come out as big as you came out. You didn't think you would come out as fast as you came out. You didn't think you would come out this blessed, but you came out better than you were when you went in. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can't reap the joy without first sowing the tears. You got to cry sometimes. You got to cry it out sometimes. Hallelujah. Let the tears flow sometimes. I have to cry before I can laugh. Because the laughter is the appreciation that came from the crime. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. But after I didn't cry in my last year. After God pulled me out of the furnace. Hallelujah. After he pulled me out of the grave. Thank you, Lord. After he pulled me out of the mess. I can laugh now. I can laugh in victory. Amen. Amen. God is good. Ain't God good? Amen. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. All right. Sister Marsha, was that you? That was me. Sister Marsha, I got a question for you. Okay. How did the 12 disciples travel? By foot? No, in a Honda. The Bible says they were all in one accord. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that was another one. This is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's it. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. All right. And we're going to look at the laughter of the of the believer. Genesis 18. Genesis 18. And we're familiar with this story. Genesis 18 verses 9 through 13. And there was a man and we talked about him earlier, the smartest man in the Bible, (laughs) Abraham and his wife, Sarah. In Genesis 18, verse 9, it says, And they said unto him, now to set up the story, the, the, these three uh, individuals, these three strangers, a man had uh, come to Abraham, he had let them in their house. So uh, we continue here in verse 9, it says, And they said unto him, Where is Sarah, excuse me, thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And they said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which means she was eavesdropping, (laughs) which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. She couldn't have children. Amen. She was past that that point. And verse 12 says, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? Throwing throwing Abraham under the bus. In verse 13 says, And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of surety bear a child? which I am old. So in the situation, Sarah had been barren. Amen. Anybody know how long Sarah had been barren? How long? All her life. All her life. (laughs) All her life. All her life. Amen. She had to fight. (laughs) Her entire life. Amen. (laughs) <laughs> Sarah had been barren her entire life. Now just imagine, she's never been able to have a child. And all of a sudden, this stranger to her says that she will have a child. Didn't bring it to her attention. She heard it. And she laughed in unbelief. 
don't know what he talking about. Like, man, please, do you know how old I am? Hey, man, do you know how old he is? He's talking about Abraham. At this age, we aren't even intimate for the pleasure of it, let alone trying to have a whole child. Hey, man. So it was comical to her. That's like if, and I'm going to pick on you, Auntie Marianne. But that's like if I, if, if, if I went to Mother Marianne and said, God told me to tell you that you was going to play running back for the San Francisco 49ers. Oh, hey, I would laugh now, too, baby. <laughs> I, I, I would laugh till I fell on the ground. Even with my replaced knees and hips, I would laugh. <laughs> <laughs> to my point, amen. Why? Because, and I love you, Auntie, but Mother, Mother, Mother Mary Ann not playing football at this age. What's happening? Amen. <laughs> Amen. So it's a situation where you're going to laugh, and I already knew you was going to say that, Mother. I said she's going to say she's going to laugh. <laughs> she's going to laugh. Why? Because it's not a it's not a situation where you can wrap your head around me doing something that I am physically incapable of doing. Lord, and again, we have to remember, who are we talking about? We're talking about God. We're not talking about our capabilities. We're talking about his capability. And our capabilities do not match the God that is in us, the God that we serve. So she chuckled. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. She laughed. And God, again, and here's how we know God has a sense of humor. Because he asked Abraham, basically, what's she laughing about? <laughs> Amen. As to say, does she think I'm joking? All right. And when she tried to deny it, he responded, nah. No, you laugh. <laughs> Amen. You laugh, sir. You can't deny. You laugh. All right. It's funny, right? It's funny sense of humor. God then says that the same child that she would bear would be named Isaac. And Isaac means he laughs. He that laughs. Amen. See the sense of humor of God? Oh, you want to laugh? Well, I'm going to name your son laugh. Now laugh at that. <laughs> Amen. But it wasn't a mockery. Because Isaac brought her joy. Amen. And what does laughter do? Brings his joy. All right. So he was also blessing her at the same time. He was blessing her. Although the idea that she would conceive was last laughable. And although there was a light rebuke, God knew what her response would be. Why? Because he knows us. And later on, she responds to the situation in Genesis 21, verses 5 and 6. It says, And Abraham was a hundred years old, and his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. Amen. So what initially seemed impossible, God made possible. Amen. And Sarah's initial response of laughter in disbelief was changed to laughter of joy because God did the impossible. Amen. Because God did what he said he would do and he blessed her and he made her to laugh. Literally in two ways. He made her to sakak, which means to laugh. <clears throat> but he also made her yitzak, which is Isaac's name in Hebrew, meaning he who laughed. All right. So she laughed literally, but then she literally gave birth. Amen. To laughter. Amen. What does that tell us? That even though the situation may seem like it can't happen, Lord. Nah, that's not going to work. All right. We can't deny who God is in his power. We can't put a cap on it. All right. We can't limit God. Can't put him in the box to say what he can and cannot do. There are a lot of things that you and I can and cannot do. But when God shows up on your behalf and you recognize the joy that it brings you, amen, this causes us to laugh. Amen. Laughter 
Why? Because it's good in our soul. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, I got one last thing. One last thing. First lady. You hear first lady? I can't hear you. We can hear you. She's on the phone. Oh, she's on the uh, phone. Our nerves acting up. Well, since you're talking, Pastor, uh -oh. how you doing? I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Okay, well, go I got ahead. both of you. Well, let me ask both of y'all. Uh, what kind of man was Boaz before he married? <laughs> no comment. All right, I'll ask the question again and then I'll answer it for you. What kind of man was Boaz before he married? He was ruthless. All right. That's it. <laughs> his life was ruthless. I get it. All right. <laughs> that was my last joke. I did seven. My stomach hurt. I cannot do seven this. For the night. <laughs> seven is the number of completion. I'm done. I just wanted to make y'all laugh. Amen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I, th I thought I saw a, a, a comment in the in the comment section. Tracy asked, "Why didn't Jesus wear jewelry?" Uh oh. Why didn't Jesus wear a cherry? Ah. Uh. He broke every chain. <laughs> Was that the answer? <laughs> That's the That's answer. A good one. Amen, amen. You see, it's all right to laugh, amen. That's a good one. I got to put that one in the archive. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Tracy, amen. Thank you, Tansy, for the answer. All right, see, and, and, and this is the benefit of laughter, amen. This is what it does, all right? It brings people together. All right. It brings unity. It brings camaraderie. It allows us to enjoy one another. All right. And it's rooted in love. All right. Rooted in love. Uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter three. All right. There's a time for everything. All right. There's a time and a season and a time and a per every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up, which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. Amen? A time to laugh. And I wanted to share, the reason why I, I went the way I went tonight is because I wanted to share with you just laughter. Amen? Laughter. Um, within the lesson as well as, as, as teaching uh, about laughter, but just share the camaraderie of laughter and how God views it. All right. And you notice I, I wanted all the jokes to be uh, scripture based. Amen. Um, because uh, I feel like, you know, the Bible, there's a lot of, in my opinion, there's a lot of funny things in the Bible. Amen. There's a lot of funny things in the Bible. I'm going to share one of, one, of, one of my favorite things that happens in the Bible, which is always hilarious to me. Um, and it's when it's when Elijah. Um, calls out King Ahab, and then they go to uh, they go to to, to uh, Mark, Mark Carmel, all right. And Elijah is telling them, all right, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna, we, we made the altar, we're gonna wet all the altar. You call on your God, and I'm gonna call on my God. So they begin to holler out for Bill. Oh, Bill! <laughs> oh, Bill! Send the fire! Right? And nothing's happening. And in verse 27, Elijah says, And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them, which is laugh, and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. <laughs> Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or maybe he's on a journey, or maybe he just sleep. He must be awake. And every time I read that, I crack up <laughs> because here you have this prophet, this man of God, and he's on his mountain just mocking the enemy. Amen. 
Why? Because you believe <laughs> that your God is more powerful than my God. So have at it. Where is he at? Holler for him. Amen. Because when we call on our God, oh, we get a response. Amen. And the response was he burned up the altar. He burned up the rock. He burned up the wood. He burned up the, he burned everything up. Amen. And then the prophets. <laughs> he took everybody out. And again, this is God. All right. You can't mock God and then expect God not to show up. Amen. Amen. So that's one of the things that I love about the Bible is that it's it's serious. Amen. And we take it serious. Uh, but there are instances in it where we can relate. Amen. Through the humor that comes from it. The benefit of laughter is that it's good for us. It's good for our soul. It's good for our spirit. It's good for our body. And it's medicine. Amen. It's medicine. All right. And you look at certain instances uh, when, 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 when Adam and Eve got caught in the garden. And when Eve, when Adam said, that woman that you gave. Amen. <laughs> he didn't call her Eve at that point. He was that woman. Amen. When John said he outran Peter. But John is the only disciple who made mention of the fact that he outran Peter because all the other Gospels didn't mention that. So John saw, well, I'm going to just put this in Scripture, that I, I outran Peter to the tomb. Amen. Nobody, you didn't have to say that, John. You didn't have to say that. All right. <laughs> or when, when Daggett, remember when he was face down? When they, when they brought the Ark of the Covenant in <laughs> and that statue God was face down, extremities off. Amen. So these are situations where it's funny. Amen. But it's also real. All right. And the joy that we get from being in God and being with God, we can exemplify that in our lives. OK. And we can show that to other believers. All right. So when they ask you, why are you so happy all the time? It's because I have the joy of the Lord. All right. And the benefit of having that is I'm able to walk. Even through my trials and tribulations, I'm able to walk through these things and know that God has got me and I have that joy. Amen. Amen. So we have um, a few minutes. Um, um, so the floor is 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 for y'all pretty much. I feel like I made I think I made you guys laugh Were the jokes. OK. Maybe sort of kind of. Amen. <laughs> so um, I'll get it back into the hands of. Um, Sister Kid, and if anybody has questions or comments, or if you got a funny testimony, or if you got an instance of where God made you laugh, feel free. But I'll give you back into the hands of Sister Kid. Amen. God bless you all, and I love you all. Amen. God bless you, Elder Terrell. Can we please give Elder Terrell a wonderful round of applause for that beautifully taught lesson? Oh my goodness. Those jokes. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, before I turn it over to um, our pastor, um, just to, um, to remind everyone that the Bible study lessons are on YouTube. So if you're feeling kind of down, if you want to come back to this laughter lesson, you'll be able to do so. You can always share with others as well. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, I am going to turn you over into our awesome pastor. Pastor Larry D. Cotton, and can we all please say amen as he comes? But I saw that he just left. Okay. They're having issues with their Wi Fi. Okay. Like. Yeah, yeah uh, Pastor right. said, uh, yeah, give it to Elder Rush. Well, well all, um, first of all, God bless you, Elder Rush, for coming on. And we're going to turn the rest of the Bible study over to you. Amen. God bless you. Madam President, let's give my teacher another hand. Amen. Amen. What a profound lesson, man. I just sat here and just enjoyed you all evening uh, <laughs> and, and, and looking at this lesson. Um, and the lesson, you really put laughter into perspective and biblically. And how it pertains to us as Christians. So we have a right to to the joy of the Lord. It said the joy of the Lord is our strength. And you prove that on tonight, my brother. Keep on doing what you're doing and allowing God to bless you. Because you put it in perspective for us tonight. You just kind of broke it down and walked us through it. And we appreciate that. I know the pastor's internet is, is acting funny. I'm sure that he will pop right back in. But uh, we thank God for all that you do. And I say this all the time. We really appreciate our teachers. 
um, for the the uh, energy that you all put into preparing and teaching this lesson mm -hmm. so that it can be a blessing for us. Thank God for every one of you that are on here. I see every name and every face. You guys show up faithfully and God is on your side. Somebody says working for my good is working for our good. Oh, yeah. um, and in conclusion, the latter part of this message, you put this in perspective and you talked about uh, Sarah and being that aged woman. And we know that that's a funny situation. Then you brought our church mother in and you talked about her not <laughs> her not uh, uh, playing for no football team. And I know that's right because she said, uh, uh, that that is not happening. Nah. Thank God. <laughs> We thank God uh, for the perspective that was given. So let me do this and I'll ease out of your way. Keep it up, Elder Trail. We love you. We appreciate you, my brother. Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you once again for such a lesson that blessed every heart on tonight. Thank you for our president. Thank you for our pastor, our first lady, and every member of this Faith Temple family. Lord, everybody that shows up, ask that you would just send a special blessing to their house. Send a special blessing to their job. Send a special blessing in their walk with you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we'll be careful to give you the praise and continue to give us the sincere joy that you've given us, that we might laugh and rejoice and have a good time in you, regardless to what the situation looks like or regardless to what the enemy tries to do. We still believe and know that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus and all name. of God's people said, thank God, thank God and amen. And amen. 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 Thank God. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good job, Elder Terrell. Good job. Yes.